What's up, y'all? This is a special Halloween edition of Speaker Brains, and yep. Zach and Josh isn't here right now, but we got good buddy David Anderson. Yay! All right. If only the couch would talk to you, right? Huh? It'd be like a Pee Wee Herman. Yeah! yeah! Special word time. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So, this episode is our top 10 favorite Halloween albums. Now, they don't necessarily have to be Halloween specific, you know, uh, but it's basically whatever album we listen to heavily in October uh, that kind of gets us in that Halloween fucking mood. And I'm a, I'm a, I, I, every year I got, I got specific things that I like to play a lot during October. And uh, we're going to go from 10 to 1. And uh, I guess we'll start with your number 10, David. What do you got? So my number 10 is uh, Slipknot, the Iowa album. Oh, their second album? Their second album. Um, Slipknot's Iowa is by far my favorite uh, Slipknot album. I dug the stuff that I heard off it of. It is their heaviest they've ever come out with. Their fucking just craziest I mean everything about that album rep to me like so Slipknot wears masks you know they wear the Halloween creepy looking masks and stuff and when they came out with Iowa uh, this was probably like their best I mean it was the best they've ever done when it comes to heavy metal it wasn't new metal it wasn't their first album where, where they did a lot of their kind of rap style things that I guess what people say I don't get the rap part of it when people say that but I guess there's some parts of it that you can say Corey Taylor kind of raps in. But so when I, I was to Iowa, Iowa, Iowa brings me to, is perfect for Halloween, I think. I mean, it's it's heavy as fuck. And then you you got songs like Igor on there, um, where it's just like this dark sounding serial killer murdering song. I mean, and then, I mean, you got a, what's the fuck song? I don't even know how the song's on there. <laughs> I haven't been so long, but... I mean, Slipknot's, their Iowa, out of all their albums, Iowa's probably the more Halloween-ish one. Mm -hmm. um, it gets you, it, it gets you, it's creepy, it's angry, they have sounds of things being bang, banged on, and chains, and people screaming, yeah. and I mean, it's, throughout the whole album, there's like different sound effects that you get. The lyrics are, are I'm gonna murder you, left and right, I mean, it's, it's just something you picture what a serial killer would listen to, and to me, Halloween, you have to have those, one of those albums that brings you to a serial killer kind of thing. You know, serial clowns and stuff like that. Yeah. I haven't heard that album in a long time. I've heard bits and pieces of it. Because Nick, Nick was a big Slipknot fan back in the day. and I'd hear it from him, but... I haven't seen Nick in years. Yeah. He... Truck driving Nick. Truck driving Nick. <laughs> oh, Mr. We used to actually... Nick was... Me and... Real quick, the old past. Me and Nick used to be uh, best friends. Yeah, I remember uh, when when you guys got back together that one day, and y'all, I had never heard this story before. When you when you sliced his hand open. Yeah, yeah, we were. <laughs> he was my. He lived in my neighborhood, like five or six houses down. When I met <laughs> when I first met him, and he was probably the second friend I had in in that area. And we stayed friends for a few years, and we were. I was probably like seven or eight years. No, I was probably like eight or nine years old. Damn. And we were, we were, my were mom gone. had this old ass fucking um, steak knife um, <laughs> with the wooden handle. She still has them actually. <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't have AIDS. <laughs> but uh, we're, I'm cutting it, we're cutting into a box because we're making a fort or something. I don't remember what it was, a spaceship. Who the fuck knows? We were kids. Like, kids, kids. And he grabs into it and, I, and he's trying to get the knife. I told him no and I pull out on the knife and it cuts his... <laughs> His finger's right here, oh, and yeah. he didn't have to have stitches, surprisingly. Oh, uh, but he was. You used this was all day, every day. Yeah, he was pissed. I mean, uh, there were some times we've had, we've had fights. <laughs> like he he whipped my ass on the bus once. Damn. Yeah, I don't want to go back into that one. He'll tell you that that one day. <laughs> uh, I think I, was, I said something about his mom. <laughs> he flipped out on me on the bus. Oh uh, yeah. 
Damn. And, I mean, he didn't whip my ass. I mean, it was more like he's hitting me in the back of the head, and I'm like this <laughs> the entire time. But but if I let him up, he would have whipped my ass. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. So. All right. So my number ten, I gotta give an honorable mention real quick though, because uh, it was hard not to put this on the list. Uh, but I gotta give an honorable mention to Riddlebox for my CP. That was my number seven. <laughs> so what? It's number seven. <laughs> Wait, we'll get to that. It's to me, man. That 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 album is ICP at their best. If you were ever gonna buy one ICP album, Riddlebox is the one. And if you're gonna buy two, get Riddlebox and Malenko. You can leave everything else out. Like Riddlebox has the best horror songs they've ever written. Has a lot of the more funny comedy, funny fucking. Weird, goofy lyrics. Uh, some of the best fucking beats. Uh, to me, ICP have never been this fucking good. And so, yeah, honorable mention for Riddlebox. So, number 10 is Iced Earth Horror Show. This fucking album. Have you heard this? No, is that new? Uh, no, this is pretty old. This is like 90... Oh, this is 2001. The only thing I've heard by them was in the Inferno album. Really? But uh, this album is... Rad as fuck because each track is based off of a uh, old school horror movie monster. Uh, a lot of the universal ones, like uh, you got us the track Wolf, that's uh, for the Wolfman. Then you got Damien for uh, o the Omen. Then you got Jack for Jack the Ripper. Ghost of Freedom is like a story that uh, the guy wrote himself. And you've got uh, Emotep for uh, The Mummy, and then you got Jekyll and Hyde for obviously that. And then Dragon's Child, I forget what that's for. Uh, that I think that, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you got Frankenstein, and then Dracula, and then The Phantom, uh, the Phantom Opera Ghost. This is a pretty rockin' ass album. It's just, it's just straight up, you know, in a way, <clears throat> kind of like mid-tempo power metal, I guess. Uh, to me, this isn't the greatest band in the world. I have their Spawn album also, the little Spawn concept album, and that's pretty good. But you know, it's like these guys are these guys rock, but I never really fucking got into anything else but their Spawn album and uh, horror show. And horror shows, it just you know they're singing about Dracula and shit. You know they're singing about Frankenstein and stuff, and uh, that's that to me is like I'm a big fan of the old old Universal movies. Like fucking Creature of the Black Lagoon, fucking Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, all of them, man. I love those old movies. And uh, this album is a love letter to those old movies and stuff like that. And I'm a, I love The Omen, love The Omen. Uh, you know, all that shit. And um, I, I love the old mummy, especially the Boris Karloff mummy. That shit was rad as fuck. You know, so that's my number 10, Iced Earth Horror Show. You need to check it out. I'll definitely have to check that out. Even I'm ne I haven't been an Ice Earth fan though. It's mainly, I think it's to me they're not as good as they can be. Well, I liked Inferno uh, mainly because it was you know Dante's it was the divine comedy. It was every stage of hell. It was was part of the song. Like yeah. every, the whole album was starting from top to bottom and you know to hell. And I liked the. I think I like. I think I like. I like Ice Earth. Earth more of their story concepts, because almost every album they come out with has a concept to it. Yeah. More than the the music itself. I mean, they're talented. Yeah, like to me, the music it doesn't get generic. It's just they don't. It's pretty generic. Yeah, it's pretty just. It I mean, is what it metal. is. It, it is power metal. I mean, yeah. it's, it's. I mean, it's not Iron power Maiden metal. power metal. It's not even Blind Guardian power metal. You know, it's Guardian just. Force. <laughs> New Dragon Force <laughs> stuff. Nothing's that bad. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's my number. Uh, what did I say? Ten. So what, what's 10. your number nine? So number nine. This is gonna be bring you back. So I'm gonna have to start it this way. Growing up, I grew up with a lot of classic rock, and by far one of my favorite CDs that um, that have ever come out was The Doors, the self-titled. Nah. The Doors. The Doors. Now. Not Halloween, not at all, but it's the ambient of the whole album. Yeah, like, dude, it that shit gives you... It is slow and 
melodic and it, just, it kind of does fit. It you know, fits the, Halloween the to me. It it feels like it's one of those things you can put some headphones on around like Halloween it's time. Got some pretty spooky shit. Right, but I mean lyrically they're all about you know whatever shit happened back in the sixties and seventies or whatever shit. Whenever that that CD came out, it's a it's their first album I think, and it's probably to me my their best one, but mainly because so of how what's on it. Oh, man, you had to ask me that. <laughs> um, it's the it's not uh, Riders on the Storm, which everyone knows of. Riders on the Storm. Riders on the Storm. Now that one should have belonged on the first album, and I would have picked L.A. Woman, which is what that song is on. But that song, that CD sucks. <laughs> so <laughs> the only good song on there is Riders in the Storm or On the Storm or whatever it's called. Uh, Second, are you really using a stylus? It's not stylus, it's the pen. You're right, it's a stylus. It comes with the damn phone. I'm gonna use it, okay? <laughs> I pay a shitload of money for this phone, and it comes with a fucking stylus. I'm gonna use this damn stylus, okay? It, that's just how it works. All right, so, <laughs> so anyway, they have a uh, backdoor man. Okay, Ben you know, Gorman, that uh, uh End of the Night was one of another popular song that they used to do. Um Alabama song, <laughs> which is not that great, but it's okay. <laughs> Take it as it comes, which is very uh it's one of those oh, what was it? I can't remember the tune to it, but that one was on the radio a lot. Um a few years back. It was on Rock One Three used to play it a lot. Uh but it's it's a more pro if you heard it, you know it. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean Light My Fire. But every song of these, they sound like, like sex songs or something like that. They might have been, but the sound did not fit their the name of the song. Like, you just got this, like I said, this ambience. Yeah, you got to love that freaking organ. Do, 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 right, do, but it's do, so do, do, do. slow with this sudden. And, and uh, Jim Morrison's voice, though, is just, yeah, dude. I mean... He was he was the man when it came to sounding almost like Pink Floyd based their I'm I'm pretty sure based off of Jim Morrison. I mean, it's hard to say, but they they sound they have similar sounds in certain things. Don't give me that look. <laughs> <laughs> if you had, they came out around the same time, but if you heard both of them, you could probably if Jim Morrison wanted to be in Pink Floyd, he probably could have pulled it off. the Pink Floyd geek. I don't know. Listen to it. <laughs> Listen to Dark Side of the Moon in the first doors and see what you get out of it. Um, Listen to Dark Side of the Moon and then put and listen to the new the, the original Doors album and see if you don't get a, a comparison. Well, I bet you will. I bet you'll be like, I can see this. Yeah, I'd have to i I'd have to hear more doors definitely. Anyway, that's my number nine. Alright. So my number nine is uh, House of a Thousand Corpses soundtrack. Fuck it, I love the goddamn movie. And the soundtrack is one of my favorite movie fucking soundtracks ever. Because you have sound bites from the movie. And then you have some new tracks written by Rob Zombie. And um then you have a couple of the a couple tracks from the musical score that Rob Zombie made. And you also have uh let me see here, who the fuck else, man? Cause I'm trying to read this but it's weird. Alright, you got okay, you got that fucking song that I wanna be loved by you. That uh, baby is fucking mimicking and shit by Helen Kane, and then you've also got uh, I want to sniff some glue from the Ramones, and like two of my favorite tracks on here that don't have anything to do with Rob Zombie is Who's Gonna Mow Your Grass by Buck Owens, and I Remember You by Slim Whitman. Every time I hear that fucking I remember you. Fucking, I just think of that sweet ass slow motion fucking part when when they shoot the fucking cop in the head, dude. Man, fucking yeah, I love that movie. And somebody does. 
The fucking so what? <laughs> Somebody does. Yeah. <laughs> man, everybody hates it, dude. I fucking I don't hate the movie. Love it. I don't hate it. I fucking. I just... Man, look, it's 2003, dude. I don't think I'm goth enough to get into that movie. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking movie had more balls than a good nine out of ten of the horror movies that came well, yeah, out. Yeah, when it came year. out, I mean, it was man. it was it was the movie to see. This for that movie movie. had ball, and then it's got fucking Captain Spaulding, bro. Don't get all true grit on my ass. Man, dude. Like, that's the I think the I best couldn't get shit rid of, of I couldn't movie. get into the characters as much. Really, dude? Fuck. Not goth I enough. love these characters, man. You don't have to be goth to like these characters. So says the guy wearing all black and <laughs> orange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my number nine. You stand in the sun for five hours if you hate your black <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you said, but I'm laughing with you. All right. I said, just sat me in the sun for five hours and see if you don't hate Yeah, in, in Georgia, it does get a little too hot to be goth, but during the wintertime... Goth is the thing. Goth is the new... <laughs> goth is the new goth. Right. Oh, yeah. So that's my number nine, and it's a fucking album I really like. So what is your number eight, yo? Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> Yep, Blizzard of Oz. Hell yeah, man. That has... My man. Right? <laughs> that has... It's number eight because, I mean, it's Halloween. It's Mr. Crowley. Yeah, dude. I mean, when you hear... That's probably the best song on there to me. But, I mean, there's so many good songs on there. But when you hear... Mr. Crowley. Ding, ding, ding. Like, all you think is... Oh, trick or treat, motherfucker. Like, I yeah, mean, dude. that has probably one of the, for, what, that CD came out, what, 1982, 83, 84? 80-something. Early 80s. That shit came out a long, long fucking Is that his ago. first solo album? Mm, no, well, what was the the other one, the uh, Moon? Um, Bark at the Moon? I thought that was came out before that. Probably. One of those two. Um, Bark at the Moon's a good one, too, but it's not I as Halloween. Diary of a Madman. I remember what the one he's like this, yeah, on the fucking album cover where he's on like like all of them. But this one, I mean, okay. So I'm gonna start off with with you probably have this album, don't you? No, right? no, nope. oh, I don't have much uh, solo Ozzy. So you have his his CD cover, right? He is praying, he's on holding a cross, and he's just you know just ah with the cross and whatever. And you're like, all right, you think vampires and werewolves and shit? Just for thinking of Oz, Ozzy Osbourne. And then I mean, he, he, like I said, his whole that whole album is heavy uh, for the time. I mean, it's heavy as fuck, and uh, the guitar riffs were great. And that was still when um, what's his name, Randy Rhodes or yeah, yeah, yeah Randy Rhodes. Randy Rhodes was on there. I mean, the Man, one, he was the, a one, badass. one of the greatest guitarists of all time. One, not the, but one of them. And I mean, that whole CD just. It speaks to me as a Halloween album to me. It's one of those things. If I hear Mr. Crowley, or uh, I when I you're waiting in line at haunted house attractions, that's tracks from this album are playing on their big old constantly speakers. Mm -hmm. because that's what it is. It's a Halloween metal album. It's not for Halloween, but you can get it. And that's my number eight, Ozzy Motherfucking Osbourne. He had to be on here. Sharon, <laughs> Sharon. <laughs> Shut up! All right, my number eight is White Zombie. Um, I have to borrow these CDs because some of them are mine. La Sexy <laughs> Sisto Devil Music Volume One. This fucking album is the best White Zombie album. Uh, and I wanted to fucking I wanted to choose Hellbilly Deluxe, man, because that's a Halloween album all the way. But damn it, this one to me. He's singing the same kind of content, but to me the music is so much better on here, dude. Definitely. The fucking, the way the drums complement the bass. Uh, but you got, man, you got tracks like Welcome to Planet Motherfucker, Psych uh, Psychoholic Slag, a fucking Knuckle Duster, Thunder Kiss, Black Sunshine with fucking Iggy Pop, Black dude. Black Sunshine. Soul Crusher, come on, dude! Fucking Cosmic Ooh, at 65 down the <laughs> Cosmic Monsters Incorporated, Spider Baby, yeah, 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 man! And this was back when you couldn't understand a word that came out of his fucking mouth, dude. This album is so fucking good. I very much so enjoyed that album. 
the best, to me, still the best thing. This and, like, Hellbilly Deluxe and... Like, I love Astro Creep, dude, but this one just beats the fuck out of it to me. Beats the fuck out of it to me. Like, I have all the White Zombie albums, actually. Yeah, so do I. Well, I, I, you don't have two... Well, I don't know, you've probably downloaded yours. Which one? There are two that came before this. There's Soul... Soul Crusher and uh Oh yeah. Probably um not. fucking I have the ones that came out make them die that one. or some bullshit. And those two aren't really that good to me. I, I listen to them on YouTube but they don't they don't sound like this. They're a little more noise rock. But uh, noise like everything what Rob Zombie does. No, nah, nah, this is this is more organized noise. <laughs> that's cool. Well, yeah, that's we'll why that. what, what did I say? Number seven? Yeah, we'll come back to that. <laughs> All right, so my number seven, Great was Minds the Riddle Box. Box. Motherfucker. Hell yeah, dude. Um, I'm not an ICP fan at all, uh, except for four albums. Which four? Um, the Riddle Box, The Great Malenko, uh, The Wraith, and uh, Hell's Pit. The only four I like, because to me, they're the only four that actually make sense. Um, they actually have a good flow to them, the beats are great, the, the lyrics are good, they're not kind of random, bad 1980s beats, um, which is pretty much most of ICP, especially their new shit. Their new shit is awful! God awful. Terrible. God. Like, they should have stopped at Hell's Pit, to be honest. They really should have, dude, because everything after the that Rave is has garbage. the best flow, I think, of all the Wraith The Wraith is a fun fucking album. Right, I mean, it's one of my favorites. It was the one I could listen to over and over again more than... But the Riddle Box is my Halloween choice because yeah. you, like you said, I mean, it, it it it's everything that they need. It has, yeah. I mean, dude, you fucking have Old Evil Eye, The Killing Fields, Old Twelve, Evil. dude, that Twelve. Shit was, I you love can that take song. the song Twelve, and you could easily make a B-rated horror short movie out of that shit, dude. Which one was the bowling? Bowling balls. Which one was that on? That's on Hell's. They Pit. did make a short for. No, that's on Hell's Pit. Man, you got Headless Boogie, Three Rings, Cemetery Girl, Toy Box. Like, every song is like a good horror yeah. story song, dude. Joker's Wild, man. Like, this this is... But if it comes to ICP best. fans... So, when I was a kid, when I was um, 12, 11 or 12, a buddy, me and a buddy of mine, we went out trick-or-treating, and our costumes were Violent J and Shaggy Too Dope. But meant the wrestling ones, because <laughs> I didn't even know who they they were until after until somebody pointed out that when I was for Halloween I was them because I watched wrestling as a kid. Oh. And they came on WCW for a few for about a year. Uh, they were on WCW as and I was like holy shit! So me and my buddy we painted our faces and we got these big ass jerseys and we went out and uh, trick or treat as I as Violent J and Shaggy T Dope and he was skinnier and I was a fat kid so obviously it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, when I found out about it, I got the Riddle Box from, I don't think I bought it new either. I bought it from Pawn Shop, I think, or a Garage Sale or something, and I loved it. I mean, it, it is Halloween. I only listen to ICP every once in a while. It's a once in a blue moon kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, I might turn them on once at Halloween just to get it out of my system. But uh, no, none of that new shit, man. Oh, they if people say they always sucked, I beg to defer. They had some good shit back in the day. They had some creative shit. Yeah, but nowadays it is awful, man. They're too rich for their own good. Fucking awful. So what is that, seven? That was my number seven. Okay, so we're at number six now. That's not your number seven. Huh? Eight, eight, seven, seven. Oh, okay, so I'm on number seven now. Okay. My number seven is going to be, it's a tie. This is going to happen a couple times. Uh, between, they're both the Tiger Lilies, one is the Brothel to the Cemetery, and the other is the Gory End. The Tiger Lilies is one of my favorite fucking bands of all time. I fucking love the dark cabaret sound, the accordions, his really high-pitched fucking clowny kind of voice. And their their songs are so fucking dark and blasphemous. Like you gotta love banging in the nails. I'm crucifying Jesus, banging in the nails, and I, I like am the so happy. Movies. Huh? I've listened to them. I just I never got into it. Dude, I love this band. I don't like them that much. Dude, but I, I think it's a point though, cause I like certain bands. 
that you would never think I'd like, but I do, and you don't really care for. Yeah. Panic of the Disco. Yeah. Yeah, I like some of their stuff. They also have that kind of sound similar, like they have a different sound, but it's one of those different sounds that kind of go with the bands. If you put them in the same genre, basically. You could. But, he's more fan. <laughs> I'm just saying he could. You could put him in that, in that pop rock kind of genre, genre for it. Pop rock? Pop rock. Listen to it's that. It's not even it. rock, bro. It's rockish. That's why it's pop rock. No, pop rock's not even rock. <laughs> this isn't even, like, there's no rock on this. This is dark cabaret, motherfucker. Dark cabaret? I don't like him. <laughs> I love this band though. Great fucking shit. Like they, their music. Man, you got on the gory end. You got theremins all throughout. It sounds like ghostly ghosts doing ghost things. Fuck, dude. Like <laughs> ghost things. What do ghosts do? They, you know, those things that ghosts do. They do ghostly stuff. They haunt people. Yeah. They haunt things. Make things move. Ooh. I think it's the vocals. Honestly, I I, I love the vocals, I, dude. Like it's so original, man. Oh like it is so. This is not such an original band, dude. But it's like trying to listen to um, what's that? The, the vampire. It's a like a band based on Count Dracula or some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a there's a band called like Count something. It's just terrible. Like vocals, I just don't like them. All right. So next, now we're on number six. Number six. All right, don't hate me. Uh oh. All right. So, Avenged Sevenfold. Ah. Uh... Right. If anything says goth and emo in Halloween, it would be Avenged Sevenfold. Which one? Their first album. What the hell one is that? The uh, sounding the seventh trumpet. See, I've only ever heard the uh, City of Evil album. See, then that's the worst album, and you need to go that back one more. Okay, sucks. Like I do like Beast in the Harlot and the, the new Bat Country. Was, I like the those last songs. new album was pretty good. It's pretty heavy, but I don't. I don't. Okay, so we're gonna Avenge Sevenfold history. The fucker lost his vocal cords or some shit or did something bad. Something I read too. that he didn't fuck his vocals up. He just well, he changed sing his singing different. style, and I hate it. I don't really care for his new style because he's like, he doesn't scream anymore. And I, I kind of dug, he had, uh, Vince Sevenfold had more punk rock, their first two albums. It was more of a punk rock sound, and but they screamed more. So it was kind of a screamo punk rock. It was right when screamo was, before people started calling it screamo. No. So, but their first album is, let's put it this way. The reason why I'm putting it on here as number six is because of the gothic E. Uh, so it always reminds me of Halloween. Yeah, so it's higher than Ozzy. It is higher than Ozzy because it gives me, it's, it's more, not because of the band's favoritism, but what reminds me more of Halloween. Like, what is a Acceptable. more Halloween album? And I got both, I got two of these on here. <laughs> so, a Vince Sevenfold, Sound in the Seventh Trumpet, okay? So, they, it had a more punk rock sound back in the day. He screamed a lot more. I saw them live when this... Their yeah. second album came out, but they sung songs from this album, and it's really good live. And that's when I became a fan more of this first album. They do have a song on here that has an awesome piano part to it. His vocals suck, but I mean, you kind of get past that because the piano is, is very good. Lyrics are pretty nice, too. You get a good story out of the song. Um, and all, secondly, you can be a hater all you want of Vince Sevenfold, whoever's out there. But those motherfuckers are talented as shit. I mean, guitar-wise, they have some of the best guitars out today. Some, and even back then, they had really, I mean, just the solo aspect. If you're looking at it as a guitarist, their guitars are amazing. That's what fooled me into getting that fucking City of Evil album, dude. Because I heard Beast in the Harlot and I heard Backcountry. And I was like, man, this is some rocking fucking power metal Right, but you need to get past that. And then <laughs> I fucking bought that album... And I've never listened. The last to it one, again. Nightmare, or I think it's not no, the newest one. They're about to come out with a new one, but their newest one, I think it was Nightmares. That one's fucking awesome if you like heavy metal, just because if you like heavy metal, hmm. it's a good album to get. The whole album is really good. The drums are crazy. Uh, the guitars are wonderful. The bass you can hear. <laughs> Sorry, 
Inside joke. <laughs> the bass you can hear, right? Yeah. So, but their first album was, they were a bunch of 16, 17 year olds. I mean, they were still in high school and they came out with this awesome punk rock album. And then, I mean, it was, to me, it was extremely gothy. You look at a skull with bat wings, you, it just says goth. I mean, it's like, hey. That's a bat skull. It's a bat skull, yeah. Hey, so I'm goth. goth. But to me, goth is Halloween. I mean, you dress up as whatever you want to be. Demons and, and clowns and fairy tale creatures and gaming characters. And goth is Halloween to me. We're all black and orange. I can agree with that. <laughs> Got my so, Halloween colors on. That's my know. number six, and we're gonna get to my number five in a minute. But it's uh, we're gonna go to number six uh, for you for me, and it's another two albums because these are the only two albums this band has ever made before they broke up. Strawfoot. Never heard of them. This band is ama Well, was amazing. It is really dark fucking bluegrass and I mean like the fuck dude the first album is a concept album about this fucking preacher who fucking got together with a chick and she tricked him into killing her husband and basically he fucking gets hung hanged however you want to say it hanged hung I say hung. They hang a lot him. of people say hang. Yeah, I don't understand. Yeah, hang. No, 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 no. We're going to hang him. Hang him up. Uh, but man, Fiddle and Jug, this album is fucking awesome. And this one's more, uh, you know, a bunch of random different songs that really match. Like Funeral March is fantastic. Uh, Broken Crown is amazing. More of Dread is great. Invisible Man is like, the whole album is great. Ramblin' Man, a uh, cover of a Hank Williams song, is really fucking good. Hole, dig me a hole, he's gonna bury some bodies and shit. Great fucking stuff, man. Great fucking stuff. And uh, I highly recommend This is a band I found on MySpace many fucking MySpace. years ago. And, uh, What's MySpace? Yeah, what is MySpace? Hmm. But yeah, so. Kids today, they don't know what MySpace is, they don't understand. What's a blog? Definitely, definitely, definitely check out Strawfoot. Strawfoot. And now we're at number five. I'm gonna take a smoke break. We're halfway through the video and we'll be back. Uh, okay, we are back. We are back. Um, had to have a smoke break. What are we on now? Number five? Give me your number five. David. Number five. Hold on, I'm gonna pull it back up again. Uh, again, don't hate me. It's a bit simple. <laughs> Again? Their second album. Which is more Halloween, but it's heavier because I'm a metalhead. Alright, this is still before... This is... You notice a trend here, though. These are all... The, these are both the albums prior to the one you hate. Yeah. The most. So, because I'm a fan of their older music more than I am of the newer. Even though their newer stuff is heavier. Like, the newest album is heavier and it has... I just don't like his vocals. I mean... But... Waking the Fallen. As emo as it sounds, it is, it has a lot more synth in it. Hmm. Um, it the the guitar and drums are still crazy. He screams more in it. It's heavier. It's not. It's no longer as much as punk rock as the first album was, but it still has that punk influence to it. So they didn't change a lot to it. And there's not much too much more to say about their second one because it was based off of a good version of their first one. The second one shows their improvement from their first one, I think, hmm. and. I'm, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of Avenged Sevenfold, but I am a fan of their first two albums mainly. And the fourth one, like if you ask any Avenged Sevenfold fan, any song that they, if they're huge fans, if you ask them, most of the songs they'll name are off of the second album. Yeah. Because that was a very popular album back then too. Now, favorable mentions, I almost put it on here, but I didn't. It was AFI. <laughs> Because, uh, which, which one? one? Um, Sing the Sorrow. Yeah, it was that one. Is that the one with the pumpkin man on the front? Scarecrow looking dude? Or am I thinking, I don't know. we did a big retro Zach, maybe. Yeah, but garbage. no, it was, it was, uh, no, I think the, the front of it was just black. With the oh, words. yeah, that sucks. Yeah, well. I don't mind some of the ones before that one, but that one sucks. It was catchy. 
it, it, you gotta admit, it's a catchy album. But it, it was, favorable will mention, it almost made my, at least on the list, it wasn't going to be my number five, it would probably been like number ten, but I, I was like, no, I'm going to mention it maybe, that because I'm not a huge AFI fan, I don't care for the guy's vocals, but that CD, at the time when I first started, when I listened to it, this was like ten years ago, I, I you know, it worked for that time of my age, and it was around Halloween, and you know, when, when I hear songs from that album, I think of Halloween still. And, uh, I mean, it's not because it's creepy, it's just emo. I guess how emo it was and how, it's a lot of things, just, it kind of reminds me of Halloween. Just, yeah. I listen to the albums and I'm like, yeah, I could play this on my own. But it's not on my top. Probably number 11. Yeah. <laughs> we'll say it there. That's where that ICP was, my number 11. But yeah, Wake in the Fallen, though, it had, um, what was it, 4th? Man, I don't remember half the songs on their, their names, but the songs are good. If I heard them, I know what album they're on. <laughs> Basically, I was like, oh, I know what that album's that was on. I'm terrible with names. But yeah, so that's my number five. That is the middle man. I think every time I hear that, that CD or something, I think more of Halloween. True that. But what's your number five? My number five is Zombie Girl. Now, this is the first EP she made. This is the first album she made, Blood, Brains, and Rock and Roll. This came out in 2007, and she just now, last year, I found out she released the follow-up album. Almost ten fucking years later, and it's actually on its way in the mail right now. Um, Did you just hear about that? Yeah, well, no, I've been into I've been into this band. I found this is another band I found on MySpace. Back MySpace. Up. Well, there's a lot of Halloween bands I forgot about their names, but there was a few bands I found on MySpace. Um, it was there was a like a techno rock band, Vampire or something, something in the Vampiro or something. I don't remember, hmm. but it was MySpace. It was a MySpace album. But uh, Zombie Girl kicks ass MySpace. because it's like straight up industrial rave music. Sweet ass beats, and all of her songs. It's kind of like Rob Zombie, man. All her songs are just about being a zombie and shit. Like you got blood, brains, rock and roll. Jesus was a zombie creature of the night. Living dead superstars go That's zombie. Story. Uh, creepy <laughs> crawler and dance of the headless corpse. That's a rock. That's a cool fucking weird fucking kind of instrumental track. Uh, I highly recommend checking Zombie Girl out. Like her music just sounds like Halloween, dude. Like. If you were in like a goth club at Halloween, this shit should be fucking playing. The uh, the beats, man, really freaking get you into it. You got like spooky, you know, kind of fucking noises and all that. Um, it's just rocking. And then like she doesn't mess with him anymore. Apparently she uh, quit her partnership with him because he was abusing her, but. She used to, on these two albums, like, the music was made by, uh, Sebastian from Icon of Coil, that, uh, album you gave me earlier this oh, year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that guy helped her with, uh, these two albums here. And so I don't know what the new album's gonna sound like, because I don't know who's doing her stuff now, but... Yeah, it was a pretty forgettable album, but it was pretty good, <laughs> too, like, for, for time. beat stuff, it was pretty good. We're in number four. Number four. Number four. All right, because it's been mentioned already, that's my number four. White Zombie. I don't know why he had it so high up. I mean, he explained everything about it. I don't need to talk about it. You don't need to talk about I it? I mean, look, look. That's Halloween, if anything else. Yeah. You know, big boobs and demons. Yeah. <laughs> big boobs. That's it. It's Halloween I mean, now, big boobs and demons. I guess I could talk about the one thing. So this album got me into metal. Okay. I would have to say, if it, I, I started playing guitar um, back when I was in high school, and the first metal album that I ever bought, bought that I ever paid money for, because you know LimeWire was still around, <laughs> yeah. was uh, La Six Crisco, Cristo, Cristo. So I mean, it, it it's the La reason why I play guitar. That album right there is whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, White Zombie. Is the reason why I play guitar, not Rob Zombie, the band White Zombie. It's pretty rad. I mean, the whole rhythms. I mean, just the rhythm guitar. It's it's nothing like, you know, compli 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 
can't talk. Complicated. Uh, the music's not complicated. I mean, if I wanted to, I could probably sit down for one day and learn, you know, two or three songs from the album each day. In a week, I could probably learn it. But I'm not that dedicated. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is the that's the the album that started my metalhead uh, genre. Is it, I mean, that's and it history. Just, that whole album screams Halloween, dude. It does. I mean, it screams the Halloween. The imagery, the music, the lyrics, and Beavis and Butthead. And Beavis and Butthead, which are on that album a lot. <laughs> like, not not they're on there, but they they mention the album a lot. Like a lot, few songs from the album back on Beavis and Butthead. Keep seeing shadows. That is pretty rad. So yeah, I mean that that's the only thing I gotta say because you said most of it. Yeah, I guess you I know. know. So, so that's number four. So my number four is Evelyn. Evelyn. This is amazing. Is that Metallica? Huh? No, that was Lulu or whatever. <laughs> this is more dark cabaret <laughs> stuff. Probably from like my second favorite female singer of all time, uh, um, my daughter's name. Amanda Palmer. Uh, she is the wife of Neil Gaiman, who wrote, wrote the Sandman series and all that, the comics, yeah. Uh, but, uh, man, I love the Dresden Dolls, her other band. But she now, did, I do like the Dresden Dolls. Yeah, they're rad, dude. No, that, that's one thing I can't agree. I do like them. Um, She's freaking rad, dude. Like, I love her stuff. Um, but she did this album with uh, another sort of dark cabaret dude named uh, Jason Webley. And the concept, and th this is a dark album. The concept is basically Amanda Palmer and Jason Webley play these two Siamese twins named Evelyn and Evelyn. And uh, the album is basically them kind of telling you their life story from being born, and that is one of the darkest, craziest tracks. It's them talking, and you got weird music and sound effects that follow it. Basically, they're born, the mom dies, they're, they're Siamese twins, the doctor gets a chainsaw and wants to cut them in half, but a cop shows up at the right moment, shoots him, the chainsaw flies, and kills the dad and so the cop picks the girls up and then he crashes into the truck of the chicken man the chicken man takes the children puts them in his trunk and for like their first six years they lived on the chicken farm in a cage and they're being fed chicken feed and then man then after that the old man dies and they wander off and like this random man picks them up takes them to this house there's a, there's a lot of implied uh pedophilia but it's never come out and said like they have uncles that come to visit and all the other girls at the house when they when uh they get too old you don't know if they're taken out to be killed or what the fuck then they wind up on a circus it's a wild fucking album dude I, I highly recommend this this is some of the fucking darkest shit when you really listen to it and Jason Webley and Amanda Palmer, to me, are at some of their best on this album. Like, it's real, real fucking good, dude. And just great, dude. It's just fucking great. I highly recommend Evelyn. You can see where we're different. On <laughs> yeah, it's not, like, none of my shit's really on the heavy metal. Like, most of my shit's, like, very... Very folky. And a few and different and common things, and then just yeah. like, yeah, I've nothing in common with you. <laughs> <laughs> we can't be friends anymore. We used to have things in common until we used to wear all black together, <laughs> big bag of pants that couldn't fit our legs, but they fit. One we leg. used to wear matching trip pants. We used to share. <laughs> we used to share. We used to share pants, man. No, we can't. We can't share pants. Your cock is too small. No, it's not. Anyway. So, your number three, sir. Perfect Circle. Perfect Circle. Which one? Don't they got like two? Murder they no, they have three. Three? The third one was more like, someone said it's a cover album. I never heard any of those songs from anyone else. <laughs> Somebody says it's a cover album. I'm guess, I guess they may be right. I don't know. I've heard zero songs from other people. Mm -hmm. But no, Murder Gnomes, which is the first album. So I haven't heard a lot of Perfect Circle. You know, if you're a Tool fan at all, you should listen to Perfect Circle. Why? Because Maynard Keenan to most people, is God. I don't believe this. 
Um, I think he's too much of a hypocrite to be God. He hates God, actually. Uh, more than anything, he's probably he's just an atheist. But uh, well, he believes in consciousness. You know what I mean? Like, he's very spiritual, and he's a lot. He's lots of drugs. And, uh, oh yeah, all about that DMT, man. DMT and, from hell. Yeah, every album they have. So Perfect Circle is there. Was there were some great Keenan. Get High albums, man. The those Tool albums. Tool albums are fantastic. I could have put Tool on here, but Tool's not really Halloween for yeah. me. Tool's like I want to listen to something jam out. Now. Perfect Circle, though, has a darker theme, I think, to it. Hmm. Lyrically, like, I mean, there are songs on there, uh, what was it, um, oh, fuck, uh, Rosemary, or, not Rosemary, fuck, Rosary, or some shit, like, some are Rosary, some are Rosemary, I don't know, one of those. I mean, there's a few songs on there though, that are just about, like, rape and, and murder and stuff on there, like, most, some, it depends on how you look at it. So you um, like raping your Halloween? Oh yeah, rape the shit out of me. <laughs> Scare my balls off, huh? <laughs> but no, Murder Gnomes is probably, it has a more, a deeper, darker tone to it than any Tool album that you can get. Tool has an awesome, I mean, they have a dark tone to certain songs, but they're, they're a jam band to me. I mean, they, they go off and Maynard Keenan has a fantastic voice when it comes to rock music. And, uh... I think that Murder Gnome was one of his best vocally out vocally vocally done albums, um, and I guess as you say, spiritual. It has a uh, kind of softer sound in some things, and it gets heavy a little bit, but it's not too heavy. And it's one of those things like you could easily just get lost in, like you could just put it in, put some headphones in, or put it loud. You always want to listen to it loud though, because Softly, you you ignore you you miss parts. You would miss things that that should have been heard. Lyrically, I mean, it's it's Maynard Keenan. I mean, he's a brilliant lyricist. Um, but it's probably it's more and more my favorite, and it would be my top three, because around Halloween time, you know, I just I like listening to the song, the CD. It's it's not creepy, but it's just like the darkness. I think too, it has like this certain type of it makes you feel like. I guess depression, really, but I mean, yeah, that could work out too. Uh, if you're depressed or something, a lot of people would like, oh, I'm listening to this song. Cut myself, drown in a pool of my blood. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I enjoy the CD around Halloween time. October is Marty Gnome. Is that their first or second album? I think that's their first one. You better be right. Right. Section. Some motherfuckers get. Oh, wait. It's the Rusty <laughs> Nail, our rustic. Viewer, whatever his name is, will be like, "You were wrong. I googled it, and Wikipedia says it's not." <laughs> uh, sorry, man. I don't know you. <laughs> oh fuck! I think it's their first album. I'm gonna check it out just to be safe for all you viewers out there who actually love uh, Perfect Circle and hate me now because <laughs> I said that. Uh, Perfect Circle. Their first album, it doesn't say, of course, oh, here it goes. Yeah, it was the first one. So I was right! Booyah! So yeah, the 13th step in Emotive was the last two. So I was right. I was correct. It was their first one. So yeah, suck it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's my three. What's yours? All right, my number three, this, this was hard because this dude has so many albums that just ooze Halloween but I, I had to go with uh, his newest album, Tom Waits' Bad As Me. Uh, you mean open it? How do you know what it sounds like? <laughs> I got <laughs> the plastic on oh, okay. it. Oh, okay. It it's like, really like you opened it. I'm like, oh. it's the best, but I haven't heard it yet. Tom Waits is one of my fa all time favorite artists. This dude it makes some of the most genius motherfucking music. It's rooted in jazz, it's rooted in folk, it, he'll sound like screaming Jay Hawkins, he'll sing really fucking beautiful, and to me, like, I like his early stuff from the 70s, which was more lounge jazz, but to me, his better stuff is from Swordfish, Trombone, all the way to Bad As Me. Have you ever heard him talk? Yeah, I man, he'll fucking he'll talk. Like a choker. Yeah, 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 supposedly Heath Ledger uh, based his character off of him. He's yeah, like, yeah. Mm, so you feel sorry about yourself? I don't understand. 
Yeah, and, and this dude Got is time. fucking amazing, man. But when it's so hard to choose, dude, because they're all so great. But bad as me, the the production sound. The album came. And this is another two. This uh, the album came out in October of uh, 2011, and I played it out that whole fucking month. Uh, from when it came out, and so every time I hear it, I just think of October, and the the songs are really, really dark on here, uh, like, the song, fucking, After You Die, like, he's asking things, he's like, like a necktie flapping, like an old man clapping, what is it like, after you die, some shit like that, man. Fucking, then you got the song Last Leaf, which is like, this dude is old, man. And when you hear a song like Last Leaf, this. fucking last, he's like, I'm the last leaf on the tree. They all took the rest, but they won't take me. It does not sound like that. I'm the last leaf <laughs> on the tree. Sound like, like Grandpa Butters from South Park. It sounds like, yeah. dude, fucking... Like, that's a song about, you know, you're old as fuck and, like, all your friends and family are dying. And you're, like, the last one fucking standing, dude. It's, and then the song, Bad As Me, fuck, this whole album, dude, Get Lost, fucking talking at the same time is fantastic. Raised Right Men is fucking great. I ruined your, your whole spirit. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, David just had to have a, take a call. So, anyway. It's the wife. Ooh. This is a great fucking Tom Waits album, and definitely check it out. To me, this one just feels like hot October and, and shit. Hell Broke Loose, Satisfied, man. It's fucking great. So that was my number three. What's your uh, two, I guess? All right, so I haven't put them in here, but we talked about it like on the last video. Corn uh, uh, Issues. Oh. Um, like I, I said on that, once you guys watched that one, on the new corn, um, I stated that Issues was their more darker sounding CD. Out of all their CDs they come out with, this is where they put in more keyboards and they started changing their sound a lot more. And, I mean, it starts off with just this, this chorus of bagpipes and drums. I think it's bagpipes and, yeah, there's bagpipes in there. And they're just talking about death and, and more and just morbid stuff and uh, I mean it's a good CD but I mean there's not too much about like about issues if you you everyone who watches this should know about that CD I mean it's one of my favorite corn CDs that are out there I have to say that around Halloween corn is just a good band to listen to in general but I would lean towards this album. I would I would lean toward uh, Life is PG. Life is PG would be a good one too, but I think that I think it's all about the tone. Yeah. The like what you hear, you know. I, I when I think of Halloween CDs or Halloween songs, you know, I think of stuff I want to listen to. I put it on my head, and what will remind me of Halloween? Not really of remind me of a great album, but what will remind me of albums that I like that would remind me of Halloween? Issues is one of them. Issues is one. It's cold outside. It reminds me of fall. And it puts me in like the winter mood, and and, and Halloween's just the first step into it. You can kind of get that feeling. You just have to listen to it. Again. Yeah. Next time you listen to it, think about it. You'd be like, man, this really does feel like that. Dave is right. Dave is so right. But that's what I got on that one. My, my last one's great though. <laughs> it's, it's it's all Halloween. So my number two, this is one that all right. David said his number one is an obvious, and if you know me. My number one, I guess, probably isn't too obvious, but my number two is a definite obvious, if you fucking know me. So my number two is from, if you guys know me, my number one favorite fucking band in the world. Can you guess? You have a lot of number one fucking bands. <laughs> this is the number one. The number I would say Primus, but that was... That's, nah, Primus see, is up there, but they're, see, that's what, I mean, they're not number one. There's a lot of them, though. That you have so many bands that you would actually, like, could be your favorite. But your style has changed so often. I would have thought Primus, to be honest. Yeah, Primus is probably, like, in the, in the top three, dude. Yeah, see? Definitely so in the top three. So you can get where I'm coming from. Yeah. 
I don't know. I would say Primus, but uh. But this seven. band has every fucking thing I love about all music all wrapped into one. It's Typo Negative oh, October that's right. Rust. I did mention that. I forgot about that. Typo Negative October Rust. I can't get into Typo Negative. Really, dude? I'm your all favorite band all day long. I love this band. Put my ass to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> like, put my ass to bed, you know? It's oh. like, I want to listen to that guy when I go to sleep because <laughs> his voice. What's the singer's name? Peter Steele. Peter Steele's voice. Um, God rest his soul. Uh, I'm going to say that, right? Because <laughs> he died, unfortunately, yeah, he a few years back. Uh, he, he fucking died, and that shit was hard. And I found out who it was, and I was like, holy shit, that sucks, I guess. I'm not a huge type of negative fan, though. But I swear, his voice is like the deepest fucking metal voice you can get. There he doesn't scream. He doesn't so. yell at you. It's like... <laughs> and it's slow. It comes out. It's not like it takes him forever to say one word. <laughs> like if he talked to you, he'd be, if, if metal, if you can imagine a animal of what he would be, he would be a fucking tortoise. Like just fucking. Oh, dun, 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 dun. Like the, like it's not. There's no, like the. It's it's a heavy seat. Like they're heavy. It's a heavy band. I mean, guitar-wise, that shit's fucking, you know, drop ev everything. But, <laughs> I mean, the guitar setting's low as fuck, and it has some keyboards in it. And it's just long and slow. And if I was stone as fuck, I'd listen to a type of negative all day just because I'd be like this. <laughs> the entire time. If I'm not asleep, I'm like this. Because, <laughs> I mean, I'm, a, I'm not a type of negative fan. I can't get past the guy. The, this, it's so slow. It's stoner metal before stoner metal was ever stoner metal. I mean, it's just... And it's not every song. There's yeah, some songs are pretty thrashy. Some songs are pretty thrashy, but his vocals aren't. <laughs> his vocals stay the same. They're just long and drawn well, he does, he does, out. They, there are some more screamers uh, on there on these uh, some of these albums. This one doesn't have a lot of the screamer stuff. But, it's uh, not really him screaming though. He's more. Like, I he's think. Yelling. I think it's the other thing. Is Josh? Is it Josh? Who's the, the fucking? Kid? Who's the? I keep forgetting who plays the fucking guitar. I get him and the keyboardist mixed all the fucking time. Uh, but the other guy, he'll fucking. Uh, what album was Typo Negative? There was a Typo Negative on a on a movie album. Oh well, I know. Uh, what do you call it? Summer Breeze was on. I know what you did last summer. That might have been it. Summer Breeze. Makes yeah. Me feel Go ahead about your type of negative. Oh man, I can't do it. Fucking type of negative is my favorite band in the world because they got a bit of prog, bit of stoner doom, a fucking a deep doom. slow guitars, really good fast tracks, a real good deep voice, a real unique uh, screaming voice. Uh, real long songs, couple short songs, great melody, fantastic ballads, like, to me, this band is flawless. Fucking flawless, dude. Like, everything I love about music is in one great fucking, it's some of the most beautiful music ever written. And, it, this fucking band, dude, like, fan-fucking-tastic, but October Rust, dude, number one, this is, this is an essential Halloween album, man. The album's all about Wicca, fucking... Goth, like, dude. It's very goth. Fucking, my girlfriend's girlfriend is like a goth classic, dude. And then their cover of, uh, I think Neil Young did Cinnamon Girl. Their cover of Cinnamon Girl is amazing. That's the one I like. I heard that one on the radio. I like, want two years to ago. live with a cinnamon girl. I could be happy the rest they did of a my few life. Covers. They've done a lot of covers. Yeah, actually. just about every album had a cover song, man. Um,. I don't think the first album had one, but the second one had a cover of Hey Joe, they called it Hey Pete, and a cover of Paranoid for Black Sabbath. Um, yeah, that's the one, I've heard that one. And there was the cover of Summer Breeze by uh, Stills and Crofts on uh, Bloody Kisses. This one's got Cinnamon Girl. The album after this had uh, a Beatles med uh, medley, where it was like three Beatles songs rolled in together. And then after that, they, had, they did Angry Inch from... Uh, Hedwig and the Angry Inch, and uh, then they didn't. I don't. They, they did not do a cover on uh, Dead Again, but uh, man, this whole album is great. You got a song, The Green Man, one of my favorite tracks on here, man. The Green Man. It's about the fucking Green Man of like uh, you know nature and Wicca and shit like that. Man, love you to death. Be my druidess. 
fucking God, dude, Wolf Moon, Haunted, um, Burnt Flowers, Fallen Man, Die with Me. This album is phenomenal, and it, dude, it just feels like Halloween. And even, dude, all the the imagery in the album, man, everything, dude, it's it it all screams. You know what it feels fall, like to me, man. What the Blair Witch Project? <laughs> But look at that, dude. It's like, yeah, it's like being in the Blair Witch Project. Everything's wood. That's why I love the Blair Witch Project, dude. I like being in the woods. Yeah. Look at this, dude. I like being There's in the woods, snow. too. Fuck, dude. Look at all these pictures, man. It's like it's like somebody just grabbed a good camera and walked in the woods and just took pictures of shit. Look at these leaves, and man. And they photoshopped it. It's like, <laughs> dude, this album cover is like every basic bitch's Instagram in fall. This is true. Like, this album is like the pumpkin spice... <laughs> metal. Oh, uh, fucking metal, dude. Like, the pumpkin it's spice so of fucking metal. good, dude. I can't believe you're the gayest person I've ever known. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this very moment. <laughs> I like pumpkin spice coffee. I, I do too, man. Yeah, I don't know what these people are. I'm buying my pumpkin so beer. You're so gay you like pumpkin spice. I've never had pumpkin spice beer, but it's interestingly, I like the flavor. This so is great, dude. You can get beer. that new Belgian pump kick, bro. That shit is good, dude. That was, I, gotta, I gotta get my bro on, man, because you called me gay. <laughs> gotta, Go, gotta, bro. Gotta get bro. my bro on. Bro, you, know? you gotta get bro. Gotta lower my voice a little bit, man. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that one. <laughs> Pumpkin <laughs> spice of metal. <laughs> Typo <laughs> negative. <laughs> Pumpco. Oh, All shit. Right. But this album is great, man. Like, it is it is essential that I... I mean, I love this album year-round, but in October, there's just that special... There's that extra kick to it, man. I would, you're, it's not Halloween, it's fall. This is your album for fall. But, hey, definitely, dude, but this even is what gets Halloween, you into winter, though, like man. Even, even, like, even, like, even, if it's Halloween, if it's fall, if it's winter, um, I mean. If it's cold outside, it's a typo negative day. So he just said. In the fall. It's not the summertime. In you the can't winter. listen to typo negative in the summer. What is, uh, your number one, David? Alright, so number one. Is uh, definitely a uh, generic, you know it's Halloween because it's the uh, Nightmare re re Revisited. Sweet. Uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, Nightmare Revisited. Why, Dave? Why do you say this? Uh, well, that because rocks, man. I, one, I love the movie uh, most of the time. I can't watch it over and over again like some people. Yeah. Like, my wife can watch it every day and be in love with it because it's a musical. But Nightmare Revisited is the metal up version of it. Rock version. It's not all metal, but yeah, it's, it's the really rocker. interesting stuff on there, man. Marilyn Manson. Corn uh, yeah, does. Corn does a great, great on, on there. there. Manson's great on there. Um, even people I hate. Sleepo Sleeper. Even people I hate, like Amy Lee and um, yeah, does an awesome. The the plain white tees, like they all. You hate the plain white tees. I fucking hate Wait, them, dude. You can't, uh, my dear Delilah. Oh, it's awful, you're man. Delilah? You don't tell me you're defending. <laughs> hey there, no. you called me gay a minute ago. No, no. I was making... You didn't hear the sarcasm? I heard you the sarcasm. You don't like Delilah? I was playing along, dude. What would Delilah think of this? That plain white tees suck. Right, but... Like, uh, what you write American a song Rejects? about me... Did American Rejects do a song on there? Uh, yeah, yeah, and that's they do pretty the, the, good. The pumpkin bitch song. Or... <laughs> <laughs> of the... The the pumpkin king. Or yeah, the, the pumpkin. I jack. They did a good version of that though. The pumpkin king. Well, yeah, there's a lot of bands on there though. It's I mean it's every song done. And then the the one song I didn't like on that was you probably like it, but I didn't care for it. Was the um, uh, what's his name? What's the booze? Boogie oogie boogie. The boogie oogie. 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 That like was, the instrumental that they did with it, it was terrible. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't good. It wasn't like I like the original better because it's like juke joint, fucking blues, right. and jazz. Whereas the one they did on this it's album, an instrumental, was a flamenco kind of Spanish, which was cool, but it didn't work. I liked the uh, the juke joint, fucking jazz. But honestly, we all know this is you're Halloween. joking, you're joking. I can't believe my ears. Right. But I mean, this is this is the epitome of Halloween album. It is, dude. You have to turn it on once before Halloween, or on Halloween, or have it playing in the background as little kids come up to you and say, "I want candy," and you tell them, "No, you're too fat." I can agree with that, <laughs> dude. Like that, that soundtrack, the original is amazing, and that. 
the revisited version is amazing as fuck. Especially if you're a rock fan. Um, you're yeah, like, I, I mean, wow, dude. Even Marilyn Manson, who at that point in his career had some shitty releases, did a fantastic version of uh, This Is Halloween. Right. And even to me, with Korn, who at that point had some shitty releases, kicked fucking ass on us. Kidnap the Sandy Claws, right. you know? I mean, damn. Kidnap the Sandy Claws. Like, just, they, they really, they heavy everyone the put their all in that shit. Even the bands and artists that I don't like. Like, Amy Lee is good on it. The 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 Flyleaf shit was fucking I good on it. Song, um, and I fucking hate Flyleaf. But damn it, man. She fucking does a, whoever the fuck she is. Uh, was it her <laughs> or was it the whole band? I can't even I remember. Just her. But she's fucking good on there. Yeah, I can I definitely agree with your number one. So that's my number one of all time Halloween. You should always play it at Halloween time. Even the original or the original. Just play the original. Let's play anything Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, just I play mean, them that's both. Halloween altogether. Play them both. Yeah, that, that, that no matter where awesome. you go, you're either going to hear you're going to hear two things, two two different things. In you go to to like a Halloween store, you're going to either hear um, Hocus Pocus, uh, I put a spell on you. <laughs> um, you're gonna hear uh, Time Warp, or you're gonna hear something from that uh, from yeah. Nightmare Before Christmas. I mean, it's pretty much what it is. True that. You're definitely gonna hear the Time Warp though. Time Warp. Did you watch the special? No, I did not to. see that. My wife missed it. She wanted to so badly. Uh, I mean, I refuse. Yeah, I don't know how I'm gonna feel about it. I want to see it just to see what the deal is, but I'm sure it's not gonna be as good as. I don't like uh, TV Broadways. I don't get them. The original. You know, the Peter Pan one they did a couple years ago was amazing. It's it was a, Christopher Walken's. It, yeah, dude. You can't go. That was a train wreck. Peter Pan! What are you doing? Yeah, exactly, I mean, dude. Welcome to Never Neverland. That's exactly. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what the fuck it was, dude. It was a complete train wreck. It was fun. To, it was a lot of fun to watch. But, uh, so my number one is the Ghastly Ones, man. The fucking ghastly ones. This shit right here is like the Scooby Doo of bands. You know, I didn't think about it. Could have put Ghost on here. Yeah, we could have put Ghost on here. And memorable men er, for mentions. Yeah. Ghost the band. Yeah, Ghost the fucking band. Should have been put on here. I didn't even think about them until now. Uh, so you just showed me that. <laughs> Who looks like <laughs> uh, a little bit? What was it? That, yeah, right there. Kind of reminded me a little bit of uh, Papa Emeritus. Papa Emeritus and uh, Ghost of the Band, who are yeah. in studio, by the way. Oh yeah, can't Again, wait for that. Till next year. Um. So the Ghastly Ones are a horror surf band. They do surf music with a horror uh, flair. I guess the easiest way to describe their sound is just take the theme song from the Munsters and mix that with a little bit of Dick Dale, you know, the theme song from Pulp Fiction, and you got the amazing marriage of uh, stuff. And all the songs, a good, both of these albums, uh, everything's instrumental except for two tracks each which have lyrics. And then in between every other song, you've got little skits of the ghastly ones. Like this one, it's like, now let's go see the ghastly ones as they cruise down the Pacific Ghost Highway. <laughs> and fucking, it's like they're just chilling, driving and shit. It's goofy, man. But it's to me, they're like they really are like the Scooby Doo of uh, of like of surf music, dude, or or Halloween music. Because it's like we're fucking this one too, man. Like this one, they fucking come the up. Beach Boys of Halloween. Yeah, I mean, really, dude. Like, there's a very Beach Boys this, but it's all just straight up rock and surf music. And uh, this one, they you have. Um, I always forget the woman's name, but she also played the Countess on Cradle of Filth's uh, Cruelty and the Beast. Uh, she's on this album, doing a spoken word tracks and all that. And um, fucking, but this is one of the few releases. I also got the Bomboras. I'm gonna give an honorable mention to that because that's another horror surf band. But them. And this, uh, right here, were released on Rob Zombie's uh, record label, uh, Zombie Go Go Records. And uh, this one, it, they, it was new in 2006, but now they haven't done anything in a long time. And I guess they are basically just broke up. And uh, broke. they're fucking pretty damn expensive on eBay now. But uh, 
if you could get a chance, fucking check these guys out because this is some great Halloween shit right fucking here. Number one, yo. All right. You know, check out our shit. If you guys want to see us on the internet, check out our shit on the Bloody Chuckles YouTube. Check us out on uh, rtgomer.com and horrorphilia.com. And you, you can also download our shit from Horrorphilia off of iTunes. Just look at Horrorphilia, uh, Horrorphilia Podcast Network on iTunes and uh, download that shit, yo. Um, you can find David's uh, music, uh, what is it, Chaos and Order on Reverb Nation? Yeah. Look up that. That's pretty rad ass shit, yo. You can check out our music on SoundCloud, Bloody Chuckle Studios. And say hello to Kinzu. Or say goodbye to Kinzu. Because it is time to end the video. Bye, Kinzu. Happy Halloween. Yeah! Happy <coughs> Halloween. Boo.